Hey everyone, myself Dr. Amit. I am junior resident in the Department of Radio Diagnosis at AIMS Hyderabad. And today we are going to discuss about a practical guide to MR imaging septic. So we all know that image acquisition in MR imaging is unique and relies on subtle differences in intrinsic behavior of hydrogen protons bound to different soft tissue and fluids to produce an image contrast. This requires use of strong magnetic fields and radio frequency coils which presents a set of safety challenges distinct from those of all other radiological modalities. MRI is safe but if something goes wrong it can go very wrong. One incident occurred in Westchester Medical Center. Six year old boy dies of skull injury due to an oxygen tank that came into examination room and it fractured the boy's skull. So this tragedy prompted the American College of Radiology to develop a blue ribbon panel of MR experts including radiologists, physicians, PhDs, technologists and representative from corporates, FDA and the law professions. So they published the white paper on MR safety in 2002 that is the first document and which was revised in 2013 forms the basis of current recommendations. MRI safety is divided into implants, quench, contrast, medical emergencies in MRI, RF heating, sedation, acoustic noise and projectiles. So we will see one by one. Introduction to magnetic field. So magnetic field can be divided into three parts that is static magnetic field, magnetic field gradient and radio frequency pulses. So static magnetic field can cause device, implants or projectile type of injuries. Magnetic field gradient can cause nerve stimulation or acoustic noise and radio frequency pulses can cause heating of tissue and thermal injuries. First we will discuss about the effects of static magnetic field. So static magnetic field it is produced by the static magnetic field coils in the MRI and magnetic field inside the bore is approximately 10,000 to 100,000 times the magnitude on the earth's surface. These coils emerge in the liquid helium for decreased resistance and once established the main magnetic field, it remains on for several hundred of years. So what are the effects? So effects are it can cause attraction of ferromagnetic materials toward the magnet, can cause the projectile type of injuries and it can produce biological changes. So biological changes are depends on the magnetic strength. So if it is below 2 tesla then there can be increase in amplitude of T waves, no serious cardiovascular effects and there can be problem with the cardiac getting. And if it's about 2 tesla then there can be chances of fatigue, headache, hypertension, irritability, there can be problem with sickle cell anemia patients. So these are the effects of static magnetic field. Now there is a concept called the 5G line which is given by the US FDA in 2005 this 5G line is the upper limit where the field strength is of no potential concern for the general public but yeah it does not safeguard against the projectile incidents so this line represent that the field drop of about 0.005 tesla so this is the 5G line we should know about now let's talk about the projectile injury so we know that ferromagnetic metal objects can attract toward the metallic bore. So it depends on the strength of the magnetic field, distance from the magnet and mass of the object. So it is proportional to the strength, distance and the mass of the object. Now projectiles can be aneurysmal clips, biopsy needles and markers, bone and spinal fusion devices, cardiac pacemakers, cochlear implants, vascular and cardiac strength if it is implanted 6 weeks then GI endoclips, hearing aids, heart valve prosthesis, dental implants this can be the projectiles. So that's why we should always screen the patient before MRI study. So what are the, so what are the safety recommendations? Installation of metal detector at the entrance of MR imaging shoot. Educating all the healthcare personals and associated staff about the possible hazards with ferromagnetic material. So for this reason, this is divided into four zones. So zoning of MRI complex four clearly labeled distinct zones to restrict potential ferromagnetic materials in MRI scanner room. So there are four zones and there is access is progressive. So here we have the 
एम आर आई एरिया इन आवर इंस्टीट्यूट हियर वी कैन सी द जोन वन विच इज गिवन इन द ब्लू लाइन सो इट इज फ्रीली एक्सेबल टू द जनरल पब्लिक यूजली आउटसाइड द एम आर एनवायरमेंट हियर वी हैव द जोन टू विच इज इंक्लूड रिसेप्शन एरिया पेशेंट वेटिंग एरिया टॉयलेट सो हियर वी हैव द टॉयलेट इन आवर डिपार्टमेंट देन नर्सिंग स्टेशन पेशेंट हिस्ट्री एंड एम आर स्क्रीनिंग डन हियर नाउ जोन थ्री जोन थ्री इज द रेस्ट्रिक्टेड एसेज सो ओनली स्क्रीन पीपल अलाउड ओनली रेस्ट्रिक्टेड विद द की लॉक सिस्टम पास की लॉकिंग सिस्टम और एनी फिंगर प्रिंट रीडर इट शुड बी क्लियरली डिमार्केटेड विद द नोटिस नाउ हियर वी हैव द जोन फोर सो जोन फोर इज द मैग्नेटिक रूम सो इट इज मार्क्ड विद द रेड लाइट एंड लाइटेड साइन स्टेटिंग द मैग्नेट इज ऑन इन लाइन ऑफ साइट ऑफ लेवल टू एम आर पर्सनल एंड एम आर टेक्नोलॉजिस्ट कैन गो इन साइड सो एम आर लेवल टू एंड वन एम आर पर्सनल आर गिवन बाय द सी बी बी आई विच इज सर्टिफाइड बाय द सी बी बी आई वीडियो कैमराज टू मॉनिटर द पेशेंट हेड एंड इक्विप्ड विद एम आर कम्पेटेबल रेसिटेशन इक्विपमेंट एंड दिस रूम इज क्लियरली डिमार्केटेड विद द फाइव जी लाइन ओके सो दिस इज द जोन फोर सो लेट्स टॉक अबाउट द इफेक्ट ऑफ चेंजिंग ग्रेडियंट फील ग्रेडियंट कॉइल्स प्रोड्यूस मैग्नेटिक फील्ड ग्रेडियंट टू इनकोड एम आर सिग्नल्स सो हियर वी कैन सी दैट हियर वी हैव द एक्स कॉइल हियर वी हैव द जेड कॉइल एंड दिस इज द वाई कॉइल सो रैपिडली चेंजिंग करंट इन साइड दिस कॉइल्स प्रोड्यूस द माइक्रोस्कोपिक मोमेंट एंड दिस इज कॉजिंग द नॉकिंग एंड बजिंग विच कैन कॉज पेरीफेरल नर्व स्टिमुलेशन सो दिस डिपेंड्स ऑन द प्रपोर्सनल टू स्ट्रेंथ स्पीड एंड ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द ग्रेडियंट पल्सिस एक्टिवेशन ऑफ द ग्रेडियंट कॉइल्स कैन कॉज द नॉइज विच कैन कॉज टेम्परेरी हियरिंग इम्प्रूवमेंट एंड इन फ्यू स्टडीज देर इज अ पोटेंशियल फॉर परमानेंट हियरिंग इन इन फ्यू स्टडीज देर इज अ चांसेस दैट इट कैन कॉज द परमानेंट हियरिंग इम्पेयरमेंट सो देर इज अ एफ डी ए लिमिट विदाउट द हियरिंग प्रोटेक्शन इट कैन बी अप टू द वन फोर्टी डेसीबल एंड विद हियरिंग प्रोटेक्शन इट कैन बी अप टू द नाइनटी नाइन डेसीबल नाउ वॉट आर द सेफ्टी रिकमेंडेशन फॉर अकॉस्टिक इंजुरी सो वी कैन यूज डिस्पोजिबल इयर प्लग्स ओवर द इयर हेडफोन्स इयर डिफेंडर्स विच कैन अटोनिएट अप टू टेन टू थर्टी डेसीबल ऑफ द साउंड ईयर प्लग्स आर मस्ट इन ऑल न्यूनेट्स एंड देर आर डिफरेंट साइजेस अवेलेबल फॉर द न्यूनेट्स वी कैन ऑल्सो डू एडिशनल पैसिव नॉइज शील्ड एंड एक्टिव टेक्निक सच एज नॉइज मिनिमाइजिंग और वी कैन से साइलेंट पल्स सिक्वेंस सो दिस आर द सेफ्टी रिकमेंडेशन फॉर द एक्स्टिक इंजुरी देर इज वन कॉन्सेप्ट कॉल एज द मैग्नेट ऑफ हॉस्पिन सो इन दिस वॉट हैपन द पेशेंट विल नोट अनयूजल विजुअल डिस्टर्बेंसेज ड्यूरिंग द एम आर स्क्रीनिंग so there can be chances of light flashes or stars in one eye so it is because of the stimulation of retinal phosphates by induction from changing the gradient field so this is the occasional phenomena occur sometime in the patients which is called as the magnetophospin now let's talk about the radio frequency heating the biological effect of radio frequency absorption is tissue heating maximum at the surface and minimum at the center of the body so fd limits are in body core it can be increased up to 1 degree celsius in periphery increases to 38 degree celsius trunk increases to 39 degree celsius and extremities increases to 40 degree celsius so these are the fd limits there is another concept called as specific absorption rate and which is depend on the radio frequency energy deposition in the body and the unit is watts per kg so fd limits are for whole body exposure is maximum that is 4 watts per kg if more then sequence will does not start rest all other cases 1.5 watts per kg is okay so these are the fd limits now let's talk about the burns so burns can be caused by skin contact with the radio frequency transmitting and receiving coils cables it can be because of contact of the patient's body with the side of bore and external objects like coiled ecg leads and jewelry can form conductive loop and heat up and that may cause burn transdermal patches contain traces of aluminum so it is better to remove the aluminum traces or it should be away from the coil and tattoos contain rich iron oxide that may cause burn so what are the safety recommendations so proper screening of patients change out of street clothes is better to give the gowns to the patient avoid skin skin contact no cross legs no arms on the hips no crossed arms 
insulation between the skin and the radio frequency coil and cable should be there don't coil the cables keep in a straight line it's better to keep the lower specific absorption rate whenever possible manufacturer provided padding should be there eyes and ears on the patient at all times so these are the safety recommendation for the burn now pediatric mri safety concerns so pediatric age group are vulnerable to anxiety so we can give sedation we can keep mock mri scanner and accompany family members there can be motion artifact so it's better to give sedation and for acoustic noise ear plugs should be there sedation and monitoring is essential for good quality images so american academy of pediatrics recommends the following standard doses of drugs medazolam can be given 0.1 mg per kg and we can give maximum 15 gram while ketamine can be given 1 gram per kg and we can give maximum 5 doses standard fasting interval for elective sedation should be there after sedation monitoring should be there always check for the patient oxygen level expiratory level it should be always 93 percentage monitoring of vital signs level of consciousness on the scanning room resuscitation equipment readily available oxygen bag mask with the oral airway suction apparatus intubation tubes and laryngoscope should be there after scanning post mri there should be observation till recover of consciousness and child responding so these are the safety recommendations for the pediatric age group now i told you about the mock mri scanner so mock mri scanner can elevate need for sedation so it will give stimulation of noise and vibration familiarize the children with the procedure and can elevate the need of sedation in children up to the age of 4 to 15 years so so acoustic noise in the unit can increase response to acoustic stimuli because of the immature anatomical development of the ear so elicit autonomic instability in both terms and preterm babies and that's why ear plugs in all unit is must so we can give other methods like ear muffs which can attenuate up to 7 to 12 decibel of the noise and noise protection hood can be given so these are the safety recommendations for the neonates now pregnancy and mri exposure so as eight there is no harmful biological effects of mri in the pregnancy but fda recommendations are if non ionizing imaging like sonography is suboptimal or if the information to be gained by mr would have required more invasive testing like radiography ct or angiography mri is acceptable so healthcare practitioner and pregnancies so permitted to work in and around the mr environment throughout all the stages of their pregnancy so healthcare workers are permitted to work around the mr environment american college of radiology is recommends that mr is risk free during the pregnancy no special consideration for both first or second trimester mr contrast agent should not be routinely provided to the pregnant patient if it's necessary we can give can mr contrast agents be used in pregnant or lactating mothers so gadabutrol contrast agents have been found to cross the placental barrier in primates no adverse effect to fetus with the gadabutrol contrast agent administration in pregnancy has been reported there are lack of control studies but few studies have found that there is increased risk in first trimester so acr recommends use of group 2 agents at least possible dose with well documented risk benefit analysis and preferably after first trimester and yes in lactating mothers contrast can be used safely what are the effects of high field mri any magnetic field strength more than or equals to 7 tesla is to be called as ultra high field the first system in this range was the 8 tesla system at ohio state of university in 1998 the first 7 tesla system with approval as a medical device entered in the market in 2017 see how much difference is so what are the effects effects are so because of ultra high field mri there is increase signal to noise ratio increase specific absorption rate and increase physiological side effects like dizziness nausea and metallic taste but the pros on it will give the high resolution scan and there is a very short time for the scanning so these are the effects of high field mri now let's talk about the mri contrast agents mri provides excellent soft tissue contrast contrast agents are pharmaceutical that enhance the contrast between the lesion and normal structure 
enhancement of the images of contrast between the normal and the diseased tissue increases the diagnostic accuracy so here we have different types of categories of the mri agents and gadubutrol contrast agents are most commonly used so categories are linear non ionic linear ionic microcyclic ionic and microcyclic non ionic so the gadubutrol is in the microcyclic non ionic okay so these are some brand names of the contrast agents but we must know that gadovis that is gadubutrol is the only contrast agent approved for use in children's less than 2 years now what are the adverse reaction to contrast agents so there can be mild moderate or severe reaction because of the contrast agents so mild one are flushing limited urticaria sneezing limited vasovagal symptoms in moderate there can be allergic reaction diffuse urticaria facial swelling throat tightness wheezing physiological continuous nausea chest pain prolonged vasovagal symptoms and hypertensive urgency but in severe there can be arrhythmias seizures diffuse edema and hypoxia so these are some adverse reaction due to the contrast agents but one of the most important adverse reaction is nephrogenic systemic fibrosis so what is nephrogenic systemic fibrosis so it is occur and characterized by the thickening in duration and tightening of the skin with subcutaneous edema so it is occur in the patient with the renal insufficiency or patient is on the dialysis so in severe cases of this reaction there can be joint contractures and immobility it can also involve the internal organs diagnosis is based on the clinical presentation and skin biopsy so correlated with the release of free gadubutrol from the biopsy tissue which is most commonly occur in the non ionic linear type of contrast agents then ionic linear and at last it can be present with the microcyclic so majority is because of higher doses and multiple doses of gadubutrol contrast agents in short period of time that's why there can be chances of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis the acr committee on drugs and contrast media the european medicines agency and the us fda given three categories on the basis of their association with the nephrogenic systemic fibrosis so there are three groups that is group 1 2 and 3 on group 1 which are associated with the greatest number of the cases group 2 are very few cases with them and group 3 which are the newer agents and with the limited data so in pregnancy we can use group 2 agents at least possible dose with a well documented risk benefit analysis okay now if you are in a emergency situation and if you wanted to ask patient about the normal serum creatinine level then you can ask few question to the patients so you can ask the patient have you ever been told you have renal problem have you ever been told you have protein in your urine do you have high blood pressure do you have diabetes or do you have gout have you ever had kidney surgery so this question you can ask to the patients if all six questions are no then 94 percentage of the patients had a normal serum creatinine level and this is the reference article so this few questionnaires you can ask and you can rule out whether a patient is having normal serum creatinine level or not so what are the acr guidelines on contrast use in the ckd patients so in ckd 4 5 patients if egfr is less than 30 and patient is on dialysis then group 1 agents are contraindicated okay group 1 agent are contraindicated group 2 agents are preferably given and after giving contrast hemodialysis should be necessary in ckd 4 point in ckd 4 5 patients if egfr is less than 30 and patient is not on dialysis still group 1 contrast agents are contraindicated and in other ckd patients there is no specific precautions so these are the acr guidelines for contrast agents in ckd so next one is contrast deposition in the brain so because of repeated injection of the linear group of contrast agents there can be dose dependent signal hyperintensity in the dendritic nucleus and globus pallidus it can occur with the patient with normal renal function and months to years after receiving the drugs has not been directly linked to adverse health effects in fda warning 2017 but yes because of the repeated use of the contrast agents there can be chances of deposition of the contrast in the brain 
so it can occur with the linear group like gadodiamide and gadopentate now let's talk about the implants and mri so device safety on mri first introduced by astm that is american society for testing and materials in 2005 current fda approved labeling for devices are mr safe which is highlighted in the green color you can see here mr conditional that is in the yellow one and mr unsafe which is in the red color so these are the three labelings mr safe conditional and unsafe and data on majority of the devices are available on www.mrisafety.com so here we can check the information labeled on the packet of the implants and we can see whether it is mr safe conditional or unsafe so let's talk about the mr conditionals so which is highlighted in the yellow color and these conditionals are patient can be scanned with mr conditionals like eeg ecg pulse or cardiac monitor leads and mri equipments like coils functional mri response pad so these are the mr conditionals mr conditionals used in mr room to facilitate the mri examinations and the examples like wheelchair ventilators step tools respirators anesthesia machine monitors power injectors and IV pumps. So these are the MR conditionals. Intracranial aneurysmal clips also MR conditionals and excessive magnetically induced forces can displace these implants. So plain CT or radiograph should be performed to confirm whether the clip is present. Certain types of intracranial aneurysmal clips, example those who made up from the martinistic stainless steels are contraindicated. Clips made up of MP35N, Algeloy, Finox, Titanium and its alloy are permanently immune to the ferromagnetism. So aneurysmal clips guidelines by ACR. So in aneurysmal clips, specific information should be there for manufacturer, type and model and material of the aneurysmal clip. If the original package present and non-ferromagnetic or weakly ferromagnetic material is there, then there is no need to evaluate for magnetism. If not, in original package and or properly labeled tested for magnetic field interactions to assess whether MRI is conditional or not. Obtain written documentation when we are doing the scan of such a patients and consideration must be given to the static magnetic field strength. So these are the aneurysmal clip guidelines by ECR. Now let's talk about the cardiac implantable electronic devices like cardiac pacemakers, implantable cardioverter defibrillators, implantable cardiovascular monitors, implantable loop recorders and temporary transvenous pacing. So we should always check is the device is MRI conditional. If S yes, then proceed with MRI. Standard protocol should be there. Pre and post MRI interrogation should be there. Yes, monitoring of the EKG and pulse oximetry and there should be always staff and equipment presence of advanced cardiac life support if this device is not mri conditional then check for any lead abnormalities if any lead abnormalities are there then do not perform the mri consider alternative method such as ct or ESG. if there are no lead abnormalities then check is the patient is pacemaker dependent if yes then proceed with caution and pre and post MRI interrogation should be there okay program to non pacing mode disable therapy for ICD monitor EKG and pulse oximetry there should always be staff and equipment for advanced cardiac life support okay temporary pacing wire should be there and device follow up after three to six months if there is no pacemaker dependent then proceed with caution there is pre and post MRI interrogation should be there check for monitoring of EKG and pulse oximetry okay and device follow up after 3 to 6 months or one week if any changes in the post imaging parameters so these are the things for cardiac implantable electronic devices heart rhythm society guidelines few cardiac pacemakers FDA approved as MRI conditional and starting in 2011 in 2017 heart rhythm society guidelines are there they made two 
recommendation that is class 1 and class 2a class 1 is strong recommendation where mri with mr conditional systems only in the context of standard institutional workflow and class 2 is moderate recommendation in mr con non conditional system perform mri in the absence of fractured epicardial or abandoned leads now let's talk about the cochlear implants the internal component of the implants are the active circuit electrode receivers antenna and stimulator so these are the components of the cochlear implants so these components can be interact with the magnetic field of the mri so implants made up of earlier than 2010 are mostly labeled as mri unsafe by astm standards so because of the magnetic field of the mri there can be movement of implant magnet there can be patient discomfort and maybe image artifacts so recently cochlear implant containing an internal magnet that have both us fda marking as astm mr conditional have been manufactured historically cochlear implants we are using before the internal magnet was removed prior to the procedure and then reinserted so before we used to have two minor surgeries and there are chances of infections were there with mr conditional magnets this is no longer required a head wrap or splint is often used during the mr imaging and which will give a good quality of the image after completion of the examination the splint is immediately removed and external speech processor is reinserted and can be used to check the functionality so after the completion of the examination we should always take one radiograph or we can do the palpation to confirm the position of the magnet and surgical revision occasionally is required to correct the magnet displacement if it's there so this is the cochlear implant now what are the absolutely contraindicated implants for mri so cardiac pacemakers with temporary transvenous pacemaker leads or abandoned pericardial leads or fractured leads are absolutely contraindicated for mri intracranial aneurysmal clefts that we just discussed where if there is a martensitic steel as a component it is contraindicated cochlear implants manufactured prior to 2011 are contraindicated movable movable metallic implants piercing anywhere in the body are contraindicated patient with suspected to have plates or sharp nails within the eye are contraindicated insulin infusion pumps drug delivery pumps catheter with metallic components this all things are contraindicated now let's talk about the orthopedic implants so there are two major concern for the orthopedic implants that is the displacement of the implant and radio frequency heating so most orthopedic implants that have undergone nailing and plating do not have significant displacement heating up to 70 degree celsius has been demonstrated in the implants but there is no any clinical significance orthopedic implants that have been properly fixed and are passive can be used in 1.5 tesla under any setting so these are some guidelines for the orthopedic implants what happened if there is any emergency in mri so mri should should be equipped with emergency medical equipment on a crash card medical emergency response should not be conducted in zone 4 so immediately remove the patient from the zone 4 to a designated area where it is safe to provide a medical care now let's talk about the last concept of this session that is quench so quenching is the process whereby there is sudden loss of absolute zero of the temperature in the magnetic coil okay so refers to sudden loss of magnetic field in the superconducting magnet due to a rapid warming of the magnet so this can occur if the cryogenic system fails so the release of stored energy during the quenching can be hazardous and may damage the magnetic and surrounding equipment there can be risk for asphyxia frost bite and yes i told damage to the mri system so helium gas is vented outside of the building via quench pipe we will press the button it will vent out if pipe fail there may be a build up pressure in the mri scanner room so what to do in such event open the scanner room evacuate the mri scanner room safely and do the oxygen monitoring so this is the quenching let's talk about the conclusion so in the conclusion proper training of mr personnel working in the mr suit should be there they should know about what are the hazardous effects of the ferromagnetic material and should know about the emergencies in the mri familiarity with the missile effect of the ferromagnetic material should be there to everyone noise reduction whenever it is possible look for radio frequency heating communicate with the patients while scanning 
sedation issues like in the pediatric age group we can solve it by the use of sedation given by the pediatrician or anesthesia and we should always know about the emergencies in the mri screening questionnaires should be there for the contrast implants and allergies and pregnancy so this is the conclusion and this is the take home message for the today's session these are my references thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one